but uh, why don't we go ahead and get started on everything? Uh, we're not we're not expecting a large group today, uh, but I do want to welcome everybody for for participating and welcome and joining us. Uh, we're really excited to do this brief presentation. Um, so thanks for joining. And let's go ahead and get started. Um, first thing I'd like to do is give some introductions. Uh, my name is Rick Efting, I'm the Director of Admissions of the Graduate and Professional Studies. I do a lot of business development and handle a lot of the enrollment for the adult, graduate, and online programs. So, Stephen and Susie, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Yeah, Hi. I can go next. I am Stephen Kellogg, the Senior Enrollment Counselor for the Graduate and Professional Studies Division. I uh, assist Rick with the enrollment process, but handle more of the funnel management. So a lot of the outreach, once individuals have inquired or applied to the program, in walking them through from you know the point of inception all the way until uh, the handoff to orientation and meeting with the academic advisor. So um, working through program choice, degree audits, and so on. Yeah, okay, I'm Susie Stearns. I'm the director of the Career Center. And these two gentlemen were nice enough to invite me to jump on this bandwagon and just tag along and offer any supports that I can in terms of career and professional development tools, tips, and resources that we offer through the Career Center. So we're going to engage with all students, um, undergraduate, through all of our professional and master's programs, and just plug in and try to provide you supports and counsel. Perfect. Barbara, can you share just a little bit about yourself? Oh, were you speaking with me? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I, due to injury and a heart condition, I'm no longer able to work in uh, my profession. And I don't actually have a degree in business management, although I've worked in business management through office administration and advertising director. And so I just feel like in order for me to turn my life around and um, recover from losing my career, I need to make a career change. So here I am. It took me two years to make this decision. <laughs> <laughs> well, Barbara, thank you. We're honored that you're, you're selecting to kind of participate in, in this webinar and that you're considering us to help do that. Uh, it takes a lot of courage to kind of change careers. And uh, we deal with students that are uh, in somewhat similar uh, situations to yourself all the time. And the hardest part is really getting started. So taking two years is not important. The important part is that you're starting now because really uh, some of that anxiety and some of that fear is some of the hardest part to get through. So good job and thank you for coming on this uh, webinar with us. Uh, we do have a small group. So if you have any questions at any point, just kind of throw them out there. Uh, you know, don't raise your hand or anything like that. Just kind of throw it out there so we make sure we answer and get you all the information you need on this, okay? Excellent, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So we're gonna hop over to the next part. Um, we wanted to start here because this is really kind of a key part of it. Uh, we've discovered just working with adult students that the easiest way to uh, achieve your goals is to first kind of define them and know what they are. Um, Stephen, why don't you go ahead and hop in and cover some of this as far as the motivation and what your experience has been with it. Yeah, so I work with a lot of students who have been out of school um, 20, 15, 10 years, five years, um, and it's a range of reasons, you know, they uh, started their career right away, they got an associate's degree, or life happened, and they just had to take a pause. Um, and a lot of the times we start from the beginning, you know, we're starting not from scratch, you know, they have some college credits or, or even just you know, a couple semesters, but we start from the beginning when we're talking about why do you want to return to school or why are you looking to change your career? So some of the big things is self-fulfillment. So a lot of it goes back to maybe they've been in a professional career for, you know, many, many years and decided that maybe they're not looking for advancement, but they have kids who are looking to go to college and they want to be a good example to them, or they started something many years ago and it's the right time to return. So that self-fulfillment is a big reason why, you know, that motivation to drive to, to start a new career, new opportunities. It is um, uh, very key um, in a lot. We see people just starting new opportunities. Once again, it goes back to maybe they started off as an administrative assistant or even worked their way up to supervisory roles. And they're just 
at a point where they can't, you know, transition to that next step because of uh, the lacking of a bachelor's degree or even just uh, a couple of credits. So they're they're ready for more opportunities or they're wanting to change companies. And then advancement in careers um, is big too. We see individuals who have been, you know, in many roles from managers to, you know, administrative assistant to directors and um, even like st- uh, I've worked with store directors for large, you know, corporations. Um, um, and they're just like, we want, they, they want that next step. And that next step is attaining that bachelor's degree just to get more recognition from their supervisors and directors and, and regional VPs. And, um, and uh, the, the, that's the reason why they're doing that transition. So those are kind of the big things that draw motivation. I would say a lot of it goes back to self-fulfillment um, and they're doing it internally. You know, they see... <laughs> kids are their next step or they've seen nieces and nephew or um, and they're like they want to be that driving factor to to pursue that so those are kind of the big things that are why people change careers and what drives them to those motivation and goals um, I think Susie had did the discur dis- or discernment in a process um, addition so if Susie wants to add a little yeah. bit more, I said sure that was a great lead-in because the motivation, the self-motivation has to be at the core of it. And we like to say at Grandview, we, so these are gonna sound like some fancy terms, but we actually try to live it. We engage, equip and empower the student, the mind, body and spirit of every student. And so certainly your mind is going to be equipped because you're gonna get degree attainment, you're gonna get academic preparation, but what we, we like to do in the Career Center is we like to work with you as a whole person. So we want to know your story. And I appreciate, Barbara, that you shared a little bit about, you know, kind of what your internal motivations are right now. And you have a story and you are wired in certain ways. You have skills, interests, work values that are going to be a really good fit for your next career. So what we do is we kind of partner with the academic side and we go, let's look holistically and let's make sure that as Barbara figures out academic programs that are gonna be a good fit for her, what's gonna be a good fit for her heart and soul and mind and life story and purpose and passion. So we start with that. And the reason we do that is because we believe that if you understand yourself first, um, you're gonna be able to do a better job communicating what your value proposition is to employers in the future. So discernment is a process and really that's what we call career counseling. And then career advising is going to be making sure that you're equipped with all of the tools and the tips so that you know what's available to you and what are gonna be some good career pathways if you would choose like an organizational studies major. What would that look like in terms of career opportunities? So that's what we do with the Cooter Journey Assessment and then also a tool that we call, what can I do with this major? So, yeah, I'm gonna start from the base level and then build around, yeah. And I'll I'll piggyback, I want this to be really conversational since we have such a small group, it's so much more enjoyable than just having us all just take turns kind of speak speak yeah, to yeah. each other. So I, I love it. And you know, part of this that really hits home for myself is is the self fulfillment part of it. Uh, before uh, this position that I'm in now, uh, I was out of education for several years, and I was uh, doing would be a su- successful sales and marketing job. But uh, personally, like what was driving me, it just wasn't fulfilling. Um, you know, professionally, yeah. I should have been successful and. I should have been enjoying it, but really I missed working with students. I, I missed mm-hmm. that feeling I got when I helped people achieve their goals and kind of, you know, it, it meant a lot to me when you'd see these people walk across stage at graduation, when you could see them growing in that. And it was so much more, you know, personally fulfilling than, you know, meeting my quota for sales for that month or something like that. Yeah. So I, that's part of what drove me to come back into education where I'm at now. So, you know, a lot of this really hits home with, with, even ourselves in this. So um, go if ahead. I, if I may ask, Barbara, what are you looking to transition into um, in, in overall? I'm looking to transition into human resources information systems. Okay. I'm really good Ooh. with computers and um, 
formatting of computers in the programs themselves and how to navigate. I'm really good at teaching people how to use computer systems and then how to navigate them, not only just to use them, but to keep them maintained and the what not to's and the what to do's. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. I also have the interest in human resources because um, I'm really good working with people and I feel like I would do really well in an organization where I can bring more enrichment to the employees themselves. Um, like employee training programs that like not only enrich their position, but enrich their lives. And I've done a lot of human resources work in the past and interviewing people and placing them where they best fit within the organization was always um, very enjoyable. Hey, I just want to jump in and say, Barbara, we are sisters because I love HR too. Um, that's where that's I started. Great. So, yeah, so before I came to Grandview, I was in HR for about 20 years and I did kind of the whole gamut. So I love that you started you started talking about HRIS, um, human resource information systems and applicant tracking systems and all yeah. of that good stuff. So yeah, um, we are gonna need to connect after this session. So yeah, can... I just really strongly feel that career would be a, I would be really well in that, that career set. Super. Well, Barbara, it's like you, you can see the next slide because if we move on, we we're talking about assessing your past jobs, like your favorite transfer. Yes. Did you get this ahead of time, or, you, or did, you, did you read the, the crib? No, but I've worked in management, and um, I've in management. The reasons I've left position is because of mismanagement, and uh, I've had a lot of really great um, educational programs to attend. Um, to further, especially in like advertising and advertising management, I was able to go to a lot of product, uh, professional seminars and attain more skills. I'm normally really good at communicating, but I'm a little nervous. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, don't be nervous with us right. for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but we appreciate it. We get anytime you're kind of on some of some of these, and it's and it's we are kind of getting past, you know. A Zoom thing we're used to shaking hands and sitting across the table too, but um, I know this is just it's just a different format. The smile and shake hands part has been removed. And yeah, have you watched the video? Give them the pickle. I mean, it's like you can't really give the people the pickle anymore. And <laughs> right. so they can't even see your smile because it's behind a mask. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I work as a receptionist and they try to smile really big behind my mask so they can actually see my page change. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that they feel welcome to the dealership. And yeah. <laughs> it's it's a struggle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Call oh, it smiling yeah. with your eyes now. <laughs> yes, exactly. yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's, you've already listed a lot of these transferable skills, skills that we were going to hit on. Um, and the nice thing is you seem to have, you know, some, some uh, career field in mind and specific knowledges of your of skills and ones you're wanting to kind of develop. Um, have you thought about some of the goals you're trying to achieve when you transition to a new career? Right now I'm trying to, so with HRIS, um, I'm not sure how, if I start that at the same time, or if I start with like human resources and then integrate information systems as I go along, uh, or if I major in human resources, minor in IS or vice versa, I'm just uh, not really quite sure how to proceed. I'm just getting my feet wet at this point. Sure, sure. And that's, I mean, that's part of the whole process. Part of the whole journey is trying to figure all that out because if you, if you had all that down, if you knew everything already, you know, that. You, you wouldn't need a lot of this stuff. So that's part of the reason why <laughs> yes. we're trying to help you. So, uh, have you thought about like, are you wanting to stay in the Des Moines area? I remember looking at your, I believe you're from Urbandale. Um, yeah, I, I live here in Des Moines. Okay, fantastic. And you wanting to stay in this area? Uh, starting out, I'd like to stay in this area. Good. Well, you already named a lot of the characteristics of people that you enjoyed. Um, you've done a great job. You're already assessing your past jobs and kind of what your likes, dislikes, and desires are. So we'll go ahead and hop forward on the next slide. And I would okay. say like in that, in the previous slide, that, that is where like myself and Susie really come in. Um, Susie specifically just assessing those transferable skills and 
and reworking your resume and reworking, um, and we'll talk about this later in the presentation, but you don't have to do that alone. Um, you are not alone in this journey. Um, so myself, Rick and Susie are all here to help you navigate through this process. So if you ever just need a meeting one-on-one -on -one and just to de devolve and, de and, and process all these uh, steps you know we are here for you to help you do that that is um this could seem very uh scary to think about and it's like writing a resume all over again or or assessing those things and um we do this with many students and these are the parts of our jobs that we enjoy the most um and in navigating those things that are most important to you and the things that you value the most when you assess those past jobs, um, specifically ones that you liked and the ones that you didn't like. So um, don't think about that as like something that you have to do on your own. You could reach out to any one of us and we would walk you through those kind of detailed conversations to, to see how that works out. Oh, very good. Yeah, the re-education is just daunting because I, just finished school for massage therapy in 2013 and then dove back in in 2014 to get the massage therapy mastery program uh, so that I could move forth to being a massage therapy instructor. And then I specialize in orthopedic massage and um, helping people through biomechanical restructuring, get back mobility and range of motion and live with less pain. And I really spent a lot of time because studying and I worked really hard because I wanted to be the best. And um, I achieved, I don't think I was the best massage therapist in the point, but I was the best in the skill set that I had. That I had a lot of the things that I did with people are things that um, I just developed over time in asking friends and family and anybody else I could get to sit still long enough so that I could work with one of their joints. <laughs> 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 so a lot of my sessions went like an hour and a half to two hours. Mm. And oh. I just, my heart just won't do that anymore. I can't do the lunging. I mean, I can do lunges for 20 or 30 minutes and next, like just minor workouts, but I can't do a hour and a half to two hour long workout, which is what orthopedic massage is without going mm. to tachycardia. <laughs> <laughs> and then unfortunately I broke my foot and then I fractured my knee, sprained my ankle and tore the labrum and my shoulder, which kind of obliterated my beautiful career that I had made along with uh, super bench, I have Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. So that was just a perfect storm to uh, shut me down. It was, it was really heartbreaking. <laughs> I can't imagine how difficult that is, Barbara, when you put in that much time and effort yeah. to, and have it kind of removed for you for not your own purposes, you know, for not your own choice. That makes things yeah. a lot more yeah. difficult to kind of, you know, swallow and, and move on past because, you know, as, as the three of us, we all work in education. We know how hard people work when they're studying for these different degrees and how, you know, mm -hmm. they want these careers and have it taken away through no choice of your own. It, it, it's it's very difficult. Um, so, well, at least I have the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of anatomy studying under my belt. I don't know what that'll do for me, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't even I can't even do lunges for like five minutes. So you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if I could do lunges for very long now. Um, I'm just coming back from being injured and. Um, my heart doesn't really like me doing a whole lot of strenuous activity yet. Sure. But I've had it since 19 and I used to be able to run and stuff. So I'm sure I can get myself built back up. It's just going to take time and dedication. Right. And thank you well, for sharing your story. That that helps yeah. a lot of us when we work with you and to make sure that mm -hmm. you are in the right program and the right career field that, you know, like that holistic approach that Susie was talking about, you want to find something that maximize, you know, your strength and i would say your past experience over the last seven years are all transferable skills that that we could use that you can use to sell your story um and why you're looking yeah. for a career change and, and why you're looking to do, devolve into something different so you know that that truly is those conversations that help us help you uh, attain your goals your long-term career goals so thank you we really appreciate that yeah it absolutely everything that stephen just said Yes, I totally agree. It just helps. Everybody's got a different story and life happens. And 
um, you know, our goal is to just the three of us work together and we get a pour into you and help you realize your goals. So um, and oh, yeah. it helps when you. Everybody does a, have a different story. Um, yeah. yeah. I worked in um, uh, <laughs> massage therapy with um, people that were um, going through addiction recovery. And so mm -hmm. for the first part of their journey, in order to detox, I did a lot. I did some detox massage therapy at 30 minute sessions. And um, so you learn just everybody has a story and you have to read everybody's backstories. And um, that doesn't just apply to people that are going through uh, addiction and recovery that applies to everyone that you interact with on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. And it's like, I, I swear you had this presentation ahead because if we go back to the next one, ah. we go right up <laughs> to talking with, you know, career counselors. And counsel so I must have sent this to you and not known it somehow. You're, you're doing a great job of leading us into it. Um, you know, when, when you're looking at, uh, have, have you looked into like the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics or anything when you're thinking about the different careers? Or is this just something you've, you've put together just through talking with others and Kind of your interests and the transferable skills we spoke about earlier i just went back to the beginning i i like to take things apart and look at them bit by bit and then see how they fit together as a whole um that's probably the logistical side of my head that is good with computers um so i just sat down and said you know what do i like to do what do i want to do what do i not like about any of the careers that i've had what have i loved about them what have i attained um what have i developed as strengths where are my weaknesses and then so my weaknesses, I think, okay, I need to work on this, 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 and this, and my strengths, how can I build that up? And then how can I work all of that into a career? And I came, I love meteorology and I've been a storm chaser since I was 21 for the National Weather Service as a storm spotter. And, um, but meteorology doesn't really, for what I, my interest lies, doesn't really work here and my kids still have school. And then um, good with computers. I like working with people. I'm good working with people. And I've been a certified job coach working with adults with disabilities. And I've really enjoyed that. But I don't like the structures of the organizations themselves that I worked with. And there are a lot of times unorganized uh, misuse of funds. And say, a lot of businesses are like that. So what can I do to help change that and or help make things better? And I thought, well, human resources. I work directly with everyone that's hired. And so then not only do I get to work with hiring them, but then I can work with helping them develop themselves personally and capitalize on their own strengths. So that's kind of how my mind works, by the way. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how I started looking up human resources positions and then information system positions. And then I ran into human resources IS. And I'm like, wow, that's like, so if I were going to take a career <laughs> and just make up something that worked for me, I'm like, that would be it. And I didn't know that it even existed. Well, I think you really captured the essence of what this uh, slide's kind of going for us to making sure you're finding the right next career and not just yeah. the next, you know, the next something, the next career, something you want to do for years and years and not just the next job. Because you know, I'm sure yes. Susie would verify that those are two drastically different things a lot of times. So yes. Uh, Susie, I know that you had some other ones on here. Do you want yeah. to speak to this a bit? I, yeah, absolutely. And it's just a piggyback on everything that we've already kind of covered, you know, um, but you've heard, Barbara, you've heard of the term lifelong learning, right? Yeah, Have I'm a lifelong learner. <laughs> lifelong. Okay, so um, according to the U.S. Bureau um, of Labor Statistics, it used to be that they projected that if you were you know, um, early career at this point in time, within the last couple of years, they changed this, but it, it used to be that they projected the Department of Labor um, that you were going to change jobs 12 to 15 times over the course of your working career. But oh, wow. now, um, but actually it keeps going up. Um, so it's over 20 now is what they project that over the course of your working lifetime. And the reason for that is because jobs and career pathways continue to emerge at the pace of advances with technology. So there are jobs that are gonna be available, you know, five years from now that, that just don't exist. 
today. You know, there yeah. just is going to be the emergence. So I'm trying to be a good counselor here and listen to what you're sharing with us. And what I hear you saying is that you have really good logic skills. You're an analyst. You like people. You like process improvement. And so the self-awareness piece is really there. And what I would encourage you, if we started working together in career counseling, I would go, let's look at long life learning. So that means you're going to be a lifelong learner. You're going to learn. But what is the horizon of your life? If you want to work for a long time and continue to evolve with te technological advances, what does that look like for you? What's going to be a good career pathway that's going to leverage your skills, interests, work values, and your life story. Does that make sense yes. in terms of, yeah. So it's just, it's a longer view because we know technology is gonna continue to change the landscape of employment. And so we have to be ready for that. We have to help students move into the gig economy. So that's what we mean when we talk about long, kind of long life learning, preparing you for the immediate future, but then also kind of a career pathway that you can you can weave in and out of, but yes. not do not random moves, <clears throat> but strategic moves. Yes. And okay. um, with HRS, I believe there is no dead end on that one. There's no there's no end game no. because it's continually evolving because yes. computer systems continually evolve and so do human beings. So exactly. As, yep. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Yes. I've been through pers personally pretty much everything under the sun, um, except addiction, I guess. I, I, I'm allergic to everything, so I can't really be addicted to anything. So uh. <laughs> if you're going to so, skip I mean, one, if you're going to skip one, that's yeah. a good one. That's a good one to skip. If you're going to skip one. Yeah. So, there's one plus side, but I've, I have been through um pretty much everything. So I feel like, you know, employees that are going through things and situations and um, so not just to be empathetic, but to be able to understand from multiple people's points of view, um, yeah. different traumas and things that you go through in life. Right. Uh, I will and celebrations also, because everything needs to yes. be celebrated. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So. That's why I tell all the guys when they bring a car deal up, just good job, because they don't hear that a lot. And selling a car is hard work. I've watched them. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll move on to kind of what you were talking about then as far as, I mean, one of the main reasons, you know, you're thinking about going back to school is to kind of get where you want to be, um, kind of rebuild, reframe, rebrand. Um, and it's more than just, you know, updating a resume. Um, there's considerably more than that when you're going in on it. You were talking about, you know, your experiences you had. Um, and you have, you know, it's, it's great to speak with someone like yourself, Barbara, because you have so many experiences to draw from and to, ways to relate to other people. Um, and it sounds like great ways to kind of relate in your experience into the field you want to go into. And that's so important when you're doing something like this, because, um, you know, a lot of times in interviews, We've all been in interviews. We've all participated in interviews. Uh, you can be the most talented person in the room, but if you can't kind of learn how to represent yourself, how to represent your skills, it might not matter. You know, you need to be able to make that that connection with the people you're working with. Um, you know, I'm, I'm Stephen or Susie. Feel free to hop in if you have any additional things to add on that. Yeah, I think um, one of the big things too, and I think this goes back to what Susie was saying, that people change jobs 20 times over their lifetime of their career. So we are always rebranding ourselves. We are always reframing. We are always building. So switching that mindset from lifelong learner to long life learner is, I think, a really great mindset. Something that I personally develop and in, in, in what I teach a lot of those kids, I don't want to call them kids because I work with adults, but that's just, uh, I do work with youth in certain aspects. But what I teach a lot of my students and prospective students is develop a personal advisory board. Um, and this is something that I learned when I was in college. And it's a really unique aspect. Think about yourself as a corporation. And um, most corporations have advisory boards or board of trustees where individuals that they can go to, to they can bounce ideas off of. Um, and it's more than just a mentor. It's a, a vast of people who who you can connect with. So 
uh, it could be used for, you know, entering a new job market, you know, you kind of connect with somebody and build that network. Um, it could be somebody who used for personal experience. It could be somebody who is a mentor and, and helps you kind of do those tedious things like rewriting a resume or building a cover letter or, or reviewing. But those, it's more than just a group of friends. It's someone you connect with on a professional level that can help you go through this process anytime that you need. And it could be one person um, or it could be multiple people who you feel a very strong professional connection with. And that professional advisory board can start here at Grandview. You know, Susie said immediately that you guys need to connect because you loved your experience and background in HR and, and your drive for that. That's an easy way to develop that personal advisory board um, to help you through, once again, these process that you don't have to do alone. Um, these are all things that we work with day in and day out. And even if I'm not looking at someone's resume and I'm talking about what skills they have that works well within that program they're deciding or choosing, we're talking about network, you know, you have a great elevator speech and why you're seeking, you know, but how do we refine that and, and utilize that to, you know, be presented in a group and across a group of boards. So this whole build, reframe, rebrand, you know, that is something that we all have to do regularly. Um, I am very young in my career um, and I already have changed jobs, you know, three or four times and I just see where I see myself and I have a great, you know, network of individuals who have helped me and this is something that I don't think was taught and probably still isn't taught in a lot of different capacities and it's, it's a good idea to, once again, focus on, you know, always rebuilding yourself, changing that model from long life learner or from lifelong learner to long life because we all want to be very successful and enjoy the career we have. Um, and that looks different in many different ways. It could be income, it could be, you know, job satisfaction. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen this, but there's this new pie graph going around on LinkedIn and Barbara, I can email it out, out to you. And it used to be two-sided. It used to be like salary and job title. And that is no longer the mindset that most individuals have. Now this pie graph is filled with um, job title and salary are very small pieces of the pie graph. More of it's like time with my family, job satisfaction, connection with supervisor. It's all these things that make up a career. And, you know, it all starts with being, you know, rebranding yourself, building yourself up and, and finding what you truly is going to make you happy. That's how you fill that pie graph. Those two things, yes. job title and, and salary are only bits and pieces of it now. Um, and that is huge when you're growing the change. Yep. Definitely. Um, job enjoyment was at the top of the list of things when I was choosing mm -hmm. um, which career path I wanted to go with. And um, I want to know that when I get to work, that it's an engaging environment, not only for the people that work there, but for me also. Well, <clears throat> Stephen and I both uh, taking master's courses and one of the things that we studied during these the master program was that um, you, you continually review yourself. Like there's one class in particular that we were in, enrolled in that the whole point of the class is make sure you're reevaluating yourself. And when you did this, like what were important parts in your life, what were important decisions, um, and then look back on it in six months and kind of keep keep maintaining, keep keep updating it because. You're always gaining new skills. You're always gaining uh, new uh, contacts. You're always gaining new points to reach out, new people, new skill sets. And it's so important to keep that updated because when you, then all of a sudden, you know, if you try to think back maybe three years ago, you're going to skip a lot of them. You're going to lose a lot of them. You forget a lot of them. Um, and also just the way that Stephen was sitting on it earlier with the pie chart. I mean, if you used to ask people, you know, 10, 20 years ago, and Susie can definitely speak to this, I'm sure, you know, and they were like, well, we need somebody who knows how to do this specific thing. You know, they want this, they, they want somebody who knows this particular program or how to do this particular task. And now if you talk to people who are hiring or managers and leaders, they want to know people who are problem solving, who are leaders. They want these soft skills and these, they're like, I, I can teach people chemistry. I can teach people you know, how to do this. I can teach people how to do that. What I can't teach them is somebody who's going to take initiative, who's going to be a problem solver, who's, who's going to be a leader. Those are things that people have come, come kind of come full circle around. And, you know, if you walked in with a list of 
these skill sets versus being able to do these things. Not most of the managers now are going to say, I can teach them how to do this. I need these. This is what I'm looking for in somebody that I want to work with on my team. Yes, I feel like I have the list because I have a great work ethic and um, I would be the person that I would hire because I know what I'm going to put into the job and I am going to put a lot of myself into my work because that's what I do. That's who I am. But um, I don't have the degree is what I don't have, you know. There's a program, since I'm good with computers and that's a strong part of my background, I can learn new programs quite easily, but um, I can't um, get the job if I don't have a degree apparently. As I get down to that interview, I'm, I'm down, I'm like the last two or three people and then I get that call or that letter It's like, you know, sorry, we went to get the candidate. And I'm like, okay, I'm not doing this March again. <laughs> it's disappointing. <laughs> It's so frustrating. I'm, I, 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 yeah, it's got to be so frustrating because we've all been there where we wanted a position or a job or something and gotten down to the final. Yeah. And a lot of times it is something that it can be that simple that they're like, we yeah. are looking for someone who has a degree. Um, but yeah, well, and a lot of times I feel like, you know, even for like an administrative uh, system position, with like, shoot, you know, not to toot my own horn or anything, but I mean, I started out doing administrative assistant work for, actually I started with my aunt and uncle at a snowboarding business called France Sports in <laughs> Washington State. And um, so I relocated out there to work with them and I started in the dirt. I started edging snowboards in this dark dingy shop with a razor blade and I had to go around and smooth all the corners and smooth all the edges. And then I went to welding or melding where you have to take uh, liquid PTEX and meld it with the bottom of the board and repair like a dimple. And then I went to the print shop, which was in this old cattle slaughterhouse. <laughs> There's like meat hooks hanging from the ceiling and conveyors and, and we're printing snowboard tops and bottoms in there. And then um, they had a secretary quit. And so my aunt come over and say, hey, I want you to come in the phones for me this week. And that was, I guess, my, my impromptu tryout. And so she gave me the job. So then I started answering phones for France Sports and they had six phone lines, right? Oh. And then they added on 24 seven snowboards, which that was their in-house snowboarding company and they had four lines for them. Then they added on affordable self-storage and I did two lines for them. I was interviewing job candidates, placing them within the business because I'd worked in all the positions and I knew who would fit where. And then I was also renting storage units, <laughs> planning company birthday parties and events and picnics and monthly um, events and get togethers. And then my aunt and uncle also owned regional landfill, tire shredders and uh, Ross trucking. And they were in a lot of different things and they had gold mines and whatnot. So Seth, Ty would call me on a Saturday and say, hey, I've got these guys coming and talk about the gold mine. Can you come down and play secretary for me? And then I would go get the meeting room ready and stock it with sodas and food and call in the catering and <laughs> get all of the paperwork together, pens, pencils, tablets, um, anything that they would need for that meeting. I, I wanted them to have it where they could just reach it or go across the room and grab it off the counter. So unfortunately I was trained in that environment. And then I moved out of that environment when they sold France Sports and the guy that took over the business, called me later, and he said, you know, we had to replace your position with three different people. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was so funny. I was going to say, I liked, we, I liked your quote earlier. That should be a t-shirt. I think that I should be, I would be the person that I would hire. I think that's, yes. that's a t-shirt waiting to happen there because yes. that's, that's, I mean, that's what any, you know, that's what we would all want. You know, we'd all want yeah. to be, the, the, that's what you should strive for. Um, yeah. Uh, that was a good quote. Before, uh, I have one more slide on, and it's more specifically about Grandview and how we can kind of help, you know, in this case, Barbara, um, answer any last questions about that. Before I move on, are there any other comments on this on this uh, build, reframe, rebrand? No, I feel like that's kind of my life story. <laughs> <laughs> rebuild, reframe, rebrand, keep going, keep going, you can do it. <laughs> I've always had to be my own cheerleader, so I'm always just like, you got this, you can do this, just try again. Do this, do that. We're going to try this now. <laughs> right. I'm tired. <laughs> well, it's obvious you have you have so much experience, and 
you mentioned earlier, you know, a lot of it, you felt like you've gotten down the last two or three people and the degrees kind of been the, the missing piece to help get you over the top. Um, you know, if you, uh, if you end up uh, coming through with applying here, you're going to work a lot with Steven. You're going to work some with me. Um, once you're here, you're going to be working with Susie. Um, and we're always going to be at your service. Like that's one of the benefits of uh, coming to Grandviews. I've worked at several different schools from state institutions to technical schools to private institutions. And it's not just a, a line. There really is individual attention here at Grandview. Um, it's the size where the students matter to the faculty and the staff because we view them, you know, we see them, we work with them for years and we take pride in your success. We feel it's our success as well. And you don't get that at a lot of other schools a lot of times because there's simply the numbers aren't there or maybe they're, you know, a hundred miles away or a thousand miles away. We're here in Des Moines with you. We're a brick and mortar campus. So you can come to campus whenever you want. Um, the other thing is that we offer a variety of classes. You know, you're, you're a working adult. You're, there's a good chance you're gonna wanna start taking some different jobs as you're going through this program. And we wanna help make you able to not only work, but to achieve those goals. Because as we said earlier, you gotta set the goals, you gotta keep in mind to make sure you hit those goals. If you never set them, there's a good chance you won't follow through on it. And this was the first step. You said, you know, those two yes. years that it took you to kind of come here, we get it. It's, it's nerve wracking and it's intimidating coming back to school after you've been out for, you know, even a few years after your massage thing. Um, but we offer a variety of classes. We offer a variety of degrees, certificates, and we have a wide variety of online or face-to-face -face once, you know, hopefully, hopefully the face-to-face -face is more common here coming up also once the whole pandemic ends, which I feel like yeah. is the biggest excuse for everything. Oh, it's the pandemic. I was going to wash my truck, but the pandemic hit. <laughs> so, but I do, we are planning on going back to more face-to-face. -face. And we also have a variety of like high flex hybrid, which is kind of a combination of both online and face-to-face. -face. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that's kind of important for you that would apply to you, we have a lot of connections here in Des Moines and in Iowa, and not only that, but nationwide. If you wanted to move later on or if you wanted to relocate, uh, we have alumni offices, we have career services. Uh, you know, it doesn't just quit when you graduate. You know, I've referred people back to Susie and her department all the time that are looking for jobs after they've left Grandview and they've been out, you know, one year, five years, however long. And they're oh, yeah, fantastic. that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're fantastic at always making sure they help you because like you say, it's it's not just, all right, you're done. It's, it's an investment. When you come to Grandview, you're an alumni and you're a Viking. Viking for life is what we have on our shirts at the fair. And, and it's something we really try to try to live, you know, live by. Um, well, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just, I don't want every other option that I'd came up with. It just seemed like it was a shortcut to nowhere, you know? And I don't want a shortcut to nowhere. You know, if I'm, I work hard and I give everything that I've got. And at the end of the day, if I work hard and I give everything I got, it's like, you know, you have to keep your cup at least half full. So then I'm continually pouring it out and pouring it out and nothing's coming back in. And now my cup's kind of empty. And um, so I'm filling it back up and it's going to overflow this time. <laughs> well, we want to help, we want to help overflow it. <laughs> uh, what, what questions? Is there anything that we have not answered? Is there any other questions you want to ask? Is there any other way we can help you or uh, anything at all that we can help kind of not only just about Grandview, but just about in general, about uh, your profession, about steps, anything like that? Uh, obviously, we're happy to answer and we, we take a lot of pride in working with Grandview, but if there's other questions, we're happy to answer those too. Um, the only questions I really have that are still circling are um, the procedure to start. You know, do I start with human resources? Do I start with information systems? Is there a way to integrate them both so that I'm working on them both at the same time as I go? Or is that going to be too much? Should I start part time just to get my feet wet and then go full time? Um, well, the, the very first step is application and that starts oh, yeah. with Stephen. And Stephen, uh, I, I can let him finish that aspect of it. But the first step is to start working with Stephen and with our advisor named Jackie Welty. Yep. So uh, there's a couple of different routes we can go. Um, it seems like you have a variety of different background and experience. So 
have you only attended the massage therapist school or have you attended a community college or any other technical full-time uni or full-time um, university community colleges or anything like that? Um, just the massage therapy school. Um, okay. I dabbled a little bit with different educational opportunities here and there, but uh, no other degrees. Okay. So um, one of the first things, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. It's all right. One of the first things I always encourage students uh, to complete is we can do a degree audit for you and that can be completed either through our transfer hub, but you're gonna have a unique set of credits that you have taken um, through that massage therapy school that we might wanna do an unofficial ev evaluation with our transcript analyst to see what will be the best option for you. As I'm listening to you talk and, and looking, listening to your experience, one of the a program I thoroughly enjoy is our organizational studies program because it can mix in some of those vocational credits that you've already completed with those uh, massage therapy credits. And then it allows you to take credits in business administration, psychology, sociology, accounting. So it's like more of a wraparound business degree oh, I see. Um, that is able to support you in a lot of different ways. So those will be conversations that we would have is how does your previous credits work well with one of, with our current programs that we offer? And then what, uh, programs are you looking at? Are you looking to do evening? Are you looking at doing daytime, part-time, online, a mixture of both? Um, that way you're in the right direction. And then once we get all that completed, we then have you meet with our academic advisor to get registered for your first round of classes and plan of study. Um, we can also talk, about, and, and Susie would be great with this, talk about those careers and making sure that degree that we select for you it, it, you don't have to sound, uh, you know, people change uh, programs all the time, but making sure that first round of credit course, the degree that we select helps you obtain that degree or that job or career you're looking for. Um, I always like to tell my students, you know, it is okay to make lateral moves sometimes because sometimes the lateral moves help you achieve long-term career goals. So yeah. you could also probably be thinking about that too as well as like, how does this degree help me attain a lateral move or, you know, maybe a step backwards um, or a step forward to, so I can reach my ultimate career goals. Once again, this is a journey. It's not something that we're going to be able to, you know, fix overnight or complete overnight, but definitely we are here as that starting point. Um, one of the things I like to tell students, especially individuals who are local um, is and there's no thing, nothing wrong. Online education is by far the best education than it has been in the last 20 years. But when you have the opportunity to attend a local school, even an online capacity, uh, the ability and the attention that you could still get from those faculty members, from those um, services on campus. I spoke with a student yesterday and her institution that she attended was based out of Minneapolis, but her advisor was based out of Florida. Um, and her accessibility to that in-person institution and her advisor was very dim. And she was almost done with her program, but she couldn't complete her internship and practicum and she felt so lost. And, she, and, and you don't get that um, when you have the ability to come to campus. Uh, I think that is probably one of the biggest assets we have. You could take our, our world renowned programs, you could attend a, a, a top university that is maybe, you know, let's say Georgetown is great, but if you can't connect with their faculty members in person, or if you can't reach out to their career services department, those services are, are lacking, even if you're doing a fantastic program. So that is, I think is something that we can offer, you know, someone who is looking to go online or an evening is we are we are a local school. We, we're rooted into our community and our connections. We, we do a great job of working with the uh, major employers downtown, even the small businesses in our area. We have those connections. And I think that's huge um, when we're starting off. And those are conversations we would have initially when we're working through you. I take pride with working with my adult students um, because I, I know how powerful education can change people's lives. And I've worked with several people who who started here 20 years ago and didn't do so well and they came back or, or started at a community college. And um, I, I work didn't I work diligently with my students to make sure that their goals are being achieved. It, you don't, I, I have students come back to me now asking advising questions and I'm like, I can't help you. We have a phenomenal advisor and assistant director that can do that for you. Um, but I will point you in the right direction. I The buck doesn't stop with me when 
when you're working with our team and our and our university staff, we take a, a key interest in all of our students, especially the students that want it, um, especially the students that reach out and ask the questions and advocate for themselves. We will advocate and work with you as much as we can. Yeah, you summarized that so well, Steve, and that's really good because we take a lot of pride in making sure our adult students uh, you know, know they're a part of this campus, that they, you know, we fight for extended hours at the bookstore in case you want to pick up your books there. You have access to the same facilities, to the same uh, uh, computer lounges, to the same library, the same wellness center, um, everything that, you know, the undergrad students could, our graduates or our adult students get those same, uh, same perks and same benefits. Uh, we have financial aid and business stay late on certain days to make sure they're accessible to our adult students because it's it's important to do that. Um, you know, we're making a commitment to you because you're making a commitment to us. And it's, uh, you know, with we work with adults all the time and a lot of them work eight to five, have kids, have families. You know, they can't come over here at one in the afternoon on a Tuesday all the time. You know, they may only be able to be come, come over here at 5.30 on a Thursday. Um, so we really work hard to make sure that our adult students know that they're part of our campus, part of our community also, because a lot of schools, I think, take that for granted and only focus on undergrad and, you know, the 18 to 22 year olds that are there for the first time. And that's, you know, that's part of the reason I, I love working with Steven and in our, in our jobs now is because I, I actually find it more rewarding working with individuals like yourself, Barbara, who have that life experience. Because I just know myself when I was 18 and 19, I was just such a knucklehead. And I was just lucky that I, I was, you know, had enough and reasonable amount of intelligence and luck that I could get through college the first time without messing it up. But, you know, there's so many people that, you know, weren't as lucky as me or had one hiccup here or there um, that were half the knucklehead that I was. And that would not have taken much. I was a big knucklehead. So I was a knucklehead. I think it's a requirement to be a knucklehead when you're a teenager. Right. I was going to say, I think we're What are you going to look back on when you're 40? <laughs> I, I was not a knucklehead. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that, that didn't work for me. I hated getting in trouble. <laughs> so oh, I was a brat. <laughs> so yeah well we're coming up on about an hour um and i know that we all have to get back to other appointments and other things uh barbara last chance any other questions uh anything else we can help you out with no i screen captured the first couple of uh screens uh with names uh sure. so that i won't forget everybody's names and i will be getting a hold of um each of you as time permits, I have a couple of medical appointments coming up here. Uh, do you, oh, uh, do you have any, uh, like, are any of the classes like accelerated classes? Yep, so I can talk a little bit about that and I kind of forgot. Okay. So in our evening and online program, so they're joint. Um, they are based in eight week accelerated courses. So what it is traditionally is it's 16 weeks condensed down to eight weeks. Um, so, and then you, you do all the same content in a short amount of time. With that, we have six starts a year. We have two in the fall, two in the spring, and two in the summer. Um, okay. And if you want to be full time, you're taking two courses or six credits a term. That gives you the 12 credits you need for the full semester to be full time. If you're wanting to be part time, you're taking one course or six credits a or one course a term, or and that is three credits, which gives you six credits a semester to be part time. I okay. always encourage students, and this is just more erring on the side of caution, to start off slower and manageable and then work your way up to that full-time capacity, especially if you've been out of school a couple of years. Um, you can always start with one class, maybe a face-to-face -face or online and to see how well or how hard that class works with your life, and then slowly progress to more courses if you are comfortable it is so much easier to start off slower and build your way up and, and get the foundation to be able to take on more courses or a higher caseload than to start off higher and then having to, you know, retract down over time because it just gets overwhelming. And it does, I, I err on the side of caution and rather have people be more successful in one course and take that one course and see how well it works with their family. And then maybe that second term take two courses 
then dive right yeah. into two courses and say, whoa, 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 I can't handle, you know, my life, my job, my kids, my dog, and yes. two courses on type of that. Um, it, to me, I'd rather say, start with one class, see how well that class works in your schedule. The nice thing with Grandview is our evening classes are only on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So you can start, you can do an evening class on Tuesdays and Thursday. And then maybe that next semester, like that evening class worked out well, I'm gonna do another evening class and then an online course to see how well that meshes with my life. Um, and they all are gonna follow- That's actually uh, perfect. Yeah. My um, work schedule at Toyota is, uh, I work Monday and Wednesday evenings and then every other Saturday. Yeah, so it, it works out great just to kind of start it out and see how things are going and then dive into like, can I take on more? Is it okay? How's my family situation? I like to say my dog because my dog is very needy <laughs> and needs a lot of attention. Well, I have, I have two girls in high school and do have a dog who um, yeah. I need to let out and uh, two cats. And then um, I help my mom uh, manage her, um, some of her things. And then I have an uh, adult brother that has, uh, he has a cognitive disability. So I manage his legal affairs and um help him manage his finances and yep. uh, health decisions. He has some health problems. So I help him with those, make sure he under, it's mainly just to make sure he understands exactly what's going on so that he doesn't end up signing papers, which he's done in the past that um, are not to his benefit. For sure. And that's why I said, we always, I rather have you start off slower, get yeah. that man, get that foundation. Cause that foundation yeah. is what makes you successful. So that's kind of our structure. We do have another start coming up in March. That's like a week from now that might be too quick, but we do have a start coming in summer and we can work through all of the things to help you. If you choose Grandview to start this summer, if you would like. Oh, okay. And um, which classes will be starting in March? I don't, I don't uh, think I get everything done in a week. Uh, it's a variety of courses. A lot of them, yeah. Yeah, we have several courses that start um, next week. We, I, I don't know. It'd be what ideal though if I could get it. If I could manage to get everything started within a week, it would be ideal to start at least one class. Yep. Um, yeah. So it's definitely something we can look into if you need financial aid. I can help you through that and working through the FAFSA, working through the application. That is my wheelhouse. That is what I do. Uh, so feel free. I'm kind of like your one stop shop for everything Grandview in our evening and online program. Um, that's awesome. You, you I actually with, um, oh. I've uh, I've already completed the financial aid process. Um, so my FAFSA, FAFSA is already done and ready to go. And um, so that part is actually completed. Have you I just need to... your employer about tuition reimbursement? Do they have a program for that, Barbara? Um, I'm just a part-time employee with uh, Toyota, but I will go on to the Toyota corporate website to see if they have any sort of tuition programs. I don't believe I would be working for Toyota or Gapus Ford, for that matter, in human resources, as they already have a, a young lady that does resources, human resources for them. She's part of the family, and I, I don't think I will um i think family trumps <laughs> family trumps enthusiasm <laughs> well uh tell you what we've got a good start here uh i always encourage people to you know move forward as fast as you started the hard part now um the next part is just working with steven and myself and getting enrolled um but if we hopefully we can get you maybe by march if not we'll get you in by summer uh, but keep, moving, keep doing things. You're, this was the first step and this was the hardest part of it. So thank you for joining us. Um, Very good. Thank you all for your time. Steven, Have Susie, a great I'll day. let you guys Absolutely. say goodbye as well. But this was all right. we really worried. We really enjoyed your time and speaking with you and hearing about your story. Thank yeah, you. I enjoyed your time great. as well, each of you. I enjoyed right. meeting each of you. Thank great. you, Barbara. We enjoyed thank your time. You. We'll yeah. talk Have a great you day. Soon. Thank you. Have You're a great right. day. Bye-bye.